Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to part four of my AFV Club's 251 slash three command vehicle. And in this episode, we're gonna be taking a look at base coating and pre-shading our model. So I'm gonna take a mixture of Tamiya XF79 dark brown and XF60 dark yellow. And I'm gonna make mix these in a ratio of about 60% dark yellow to 40% uh, dark brown to create a sandy um, color, kind of like a warm sandy color, sandy brown should I say. And this is going to give us a very nice and warm base tone in which to add our subsequent layers of Dunkel Gleb on top of this. And this is going to add a little bit of shade as well to our model. Tin this about 50-50, again using Tamiya Tinner. This is their X20 Tinner. By right I should be using lacquer tinner but it's very hard to find in this country. So I'm just going to be using their standard tinner for this. So I'm going to do a quick test spray so you can get a fine line. And once I'm happy with my mixture, I'm going to start laying very thin coats of our sandy brown color on our exterior of our model. Now I primed this already using Flayo Surface Primer Gray. The way I tinned my paint was a bit off because I did get a bit of orange peel in places, however I just added a bit more thinner and uh, added a few more fine coats of paint to undo this damage. It wasn't a big problem, but you will kind of see a little bit of a texture in certain areas of my paint and that was just because my tinning was a little bit off. So again, I'm just slowly working my way around the model, just building up uh, this coat in, um, layer by layer. It's starting to get quite humid here, here in Ireland, we're starting to get some nice weather finally. So it does mean our paint dries pretty quick, especially with this alcohol-based Tamiya paint. It does dry very fast. I am being very careful not to swamp the detail or swamp the model surface with paint here. It's quite easy to do that with an airbrush. So I'm being very careful, especially with this Tamiya paint, not to um, overdo it. And I'm going to do the exact same thing here with the running gear. It's going to fairly fly through this, and I just had them all mounted on a piece of foam just to uh, make handling them that bit easier. And I just have um, some cocktail or um, toothpicks mounted to the uh, ends of the wheels just to speed up this process. I'm also making sure that I give the backs of the wheels and um, running gear attention here too. There's nothing worse if you forget about this and you actually have bare plastic on the inner faces of wheels, so just something to bear in mind. So with our base coat allowed to dry, which didn't take that long, we're just going to take some straight off XF79 deck brown and we're actually going to use this as a pre-shade. Now this is a bit of an optional step if you so wish, but I just want to experiment with a lighter colour using pre-shade. It's something that is very common in aircraft modelling, but I do find it works pretty well in armour, especially with lighter paint tones. I do use this on my Shermans, but it's just too dark to see. So I'm kind of um, I'm kind of curious to see how Dunkelgleb will look with a pre-shade. So I'm just slowly working my way around any recessed line or any place I feel that needs a shadow. And I'm just slowly picking out these details.
Again, you don't have to be too neat, but try to keep your lines as uh, neat as possible. It just makes life a bit easier. But bear in mind, we will be putting paint on top of these layers. I've also turned my PSI level down quite low. I'm about maybe 12 or so PSI just to uh, allow me to get close to the model without uh, putting down too much paint. I'm actually focusing quite a bit into the uh, defenders and the undercarriage because this area is naturally looking up the most shadow. And the reason why this is a slightly shorter video is I ran out of FX60. So while I have that on order, I might as well start showing you some of the figure elements of this diorama. So the central part of this uh, diorama is actually going to be a command vehicle and the command elements of this unit calling in an artillery fire mission. So for that we need a crew and I have the half-track crew that I got from eBay many months ago that are going to be the actual center of the crew as well as some hornet heads. Now I know the, the crew men don't fit inside the half-track so in the in the actual figure video for this build um, project we will be showing you how to do um, basic comforting and scratch building for figures, how to do a bit of sculpting as well because we're going to have to cut and reposition the sitting figure's legs to get them to sit inside the half track. So here's our half track as it stands now and it's going to stand this way until I get some more FX60 dark yellow in which might take a week or so. However it is good to go and you can see the effect of our pre-shade. Now some people don't like modeling this way but it does give us a very deep and rich end result when painting our models. Again it is personal, personal taste and preference. And here are the, some of the figures I have actually made already. Again, these are all converted parts from my big, big box. So here's our um, our captain of our Panzer Grenadier unit. Again, he has got a horn ahead and he's from a old dragon set, which is the Fulchermaker uh, Mussolini raid set. And the reason I picked this model is because he's not wearing a Luftwaffe uniform. I just uh, hollowed out his sleeves just to give him a bit of extra detail. And then we have a figure here which I scratch built some arms for to make it a smock and he's actually meant to be holding a scratch built compass and he's taking a, an artillery bearing for a fire mission. Which is going to be the centre team of this uh, diorama. Again it's not perfect. So my first time dealing with sculpting and I didn't have any uh, green stuff or neotite so I do some milly put which really isn't up to the task of fine sculpting work. However, I'm pretty happy with it, you know, it's a bit rough, but once I paint it up, it should be okay. And once again, those hornet heads make a massive difference. And then we have this figure, which I'm sure most of you have seen already, as we did do a full painting tutorial. And again, he's going to be the third guy standing outside the half track with the officer and the compass bearer. And again, he's meant to represent one of the NCOs uh, attached to the command staff. And he's going to be holding his own weapon plus the weapon of the guy with the compass. So that's the basic um, interaction between these three guys and then the remaining two figures which is going to be one of the seated figures and the standing figure who isn't with the machine gun from the, the crewman set they're going to be um, inside the command vehicle relaying that fire order. That's the basic idea anyway. So guys I really hope you enjoyed this relatively short video. Hopefully um, the paint won't be too long in coming so thank you again for watching guys. So thanks very much guys. I've been Shane and I'll catch you in the next video.